Cowherd, this is your chance to pay Westbrook a compliment. Is this season even more impressive than his MVP season last <laughs> I year? I would like to congratulate him for clinching is in game year? 81. <laughs> I thought it was incredible. Yeah. With a Hall of Famer, he'll be a Hall of Famer, a legit big, and Melo was pretty good until this year, and now he's awful. Um, I'll say it again. This is a team has the same record as last year, and they added two Eastern Conference All-Stars. And Steven Adams, who you saw early, right. mm -hmm. is getting better every year. And I'm supposed to say I'm happy because you could be an eight seed if you lose to Memphis or a six seed? Kyle, yeah, I'm, did, I'm supposed to be blown away. Did I need to read the intro again? We were talking about triple doubles. Double, yeah. <laughs> the second consecutive year. Okay. That he's averaging. <laughs> Oscar Robinson only did it once. That's the last guy to do it. Russell like, Westbrook. Say, it's pretty impressive. Okay. It is pretty impressive until you see a video where his teammates <laughs> are clearly trying to get him rebounds and goose his stats. Watch them boxing out, people. That's how you're supposed to be. You're supposed to, no, you're supposed I mean, to box like, out. Like, Time no. out. Look at that. They are boxing out no for Westbrook. They are literally, they're goosing his numbers now. Yes, and, and look, look, we've seen this in the NBA. You remember 1994? Remember that? Remember when David Robinson went for 71 70, points yeah. scoring title? against the Clippers so he get the scoring, scoring title? title? Right. Like, look, this happens. Um... I've, I've always said that we're going to look at stats, assist stats, point stats, rebound stats from this era, and we're going to have to skew them. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like baseball steroid stats. It's like football passing stats because there's such ball dominance from James Harden, from LeBron James, and from guys like Russell Westbrook. We can't compare it to even five years ago. Between the three-point shot and the amount of possessions, the amount of time that one guy has the basketball, the stats are going to be skewed. On the other hand, like, look, Carmelo Anthony is washed up, and they traded two for one for both of the previous All-Stars in Paul George and Carmelo Anthony. And even though it could have completely torpedoed, they did beat the Pelicans on the road. They did beat the Rockets on the road in order to secure themselves a playoff berth. And it's not going to be a terrible playoff berth because they're going to beat the Grizzlies. So it hasn't been a complete disaster. It's hard to play with a washed-up Carmelo Anthony. It's hard to play when you have to play a big guy and everybody else in the league is doing away from their big guy. He's still a hell of a player. He's just a really inefficient shooter. I don't like his argument. I still disagree with you. I don't like you, his You don't argument. like it? I think it's perception, too, because you really are not a big fan of Westbrook personally. Oh, no, what, no, you, no, you're what really that not. Because now, I, I've said I this before. Odd. I said this before. When you're talking about some of the greatest players ever played, two players always, you, you kind of leave on the outside. That's Kareem and Kobe Bryant. Part of the reason why is because these two were aloof and people really didn't like them. So they don't get brought into the conversation as heavily, as passionate as other players. Because you don't really like them off the court. For guys that you like, oh, you're going to pull for them and push for them. If this was another guy going for the second triple-double, I guarantee the conversation would be a little bit different. Because it's Russ, and people yeah, don't like certain aspects of him. Yeah, I they, don't they, like they, they, so, so, But that okay. doesn't discount what he's doing on the court. Yeah, but what I don't like about him is that he's really dynamic, yet very difficult to play with. But Magic let, let me made... tell you something. Steve Jobs, okay, was difficult to work for. But some of the best people that worked for him said, listen, I did my best work when I worked for Apple. I don't, I don't like your argument either. Why not? Because, again, Colin's point is what? he doesn't make other players better. I, I agree. Look, oh, I okay. actually agree with that point. Okay, okay. I, I, didn't, say he, I didn't say he did. But, but again, what? Steve Jobs actually made other people better. And Steve Jobs won the ultimate championship in his He beat his Microsoft. Profession. But I'm yeah, saying he's profession. difficult to work with. Kobe was difficult. Mike was difficult. They, how much did they, how much did they make them better? Yeah, but they're they're getting titles. Westbrook's not even close. Well, hold up. Westbrook hasn't he's, been coached. He hasn't been coached. Oh boy. Oh, I'm, it's, I'm it's, telling you, he, he hasn't been coached. He doesn't allow himself. Use, and, oh, wait, wait. That, that's that's oh, wait. the big thing, Jim. Would he allow what? himself I, I, to be coached? I, listen, I've been around difficult players before. And I say this, and I will say this: the right coach can get in the right player's ear. At UCLA, he really wasn't taught how to play point guard. So you come into the league and you play, and Scotty Brooks is your coach. I played with Scotty. Scotty, Scotty was a point guard. Scotty was an off, but he didn't hold anybody accountable from the beginning. Right. So if you don't set that tone early on, guess what? I'm going to do what I want to do. Players are going to do that. But if you got a coach that can set that tone right away, I guarantee you a guy like Russell that wants to win and wants to be the best will adhere to that in some aspect. Okay, can, can I, look, look, my basketball breakdown of Russell Westbrook is this. He's arguably the best athlete 
in sports. Yeah. Right? I mean, in terms of speed, explosiveness, and be able to do it with a basketball is ridiculous. He is an unreal competitor, okay? But he is difficult to work with, difficult to play with, and I agree with you. He generally doesn't make doesn't make everybody around him better. Can you win a championship with him? Yes. I don't believe you can do it with him as your point guard. You need somebody else who's a facilitator. And that's the flaw in the construct of this team, as well as the coaching is in the construct of this team. If you hire a college coach to do a professional Good job, job, this is what you're going to get. So do I blame Westbrook some? Sure. But they also have Sam Presti, who gets all the respect from the media. He's the one who traded away Harden, and he's the one who constructed this team. And it's a flawed co con construct in terms of the personnel well, and the coaching. Why staff. are you looking no, at no, that? No, no, <laughs> no. Because I don't think I, I've only got one argument. It's the second time he's done it two seasons in a row. He's done a triple double. Oscar Robertson only did it once. That's impressive. And to me, to do it a second time, that's more impressive than even the first time. All your other points to me are accurate. He doesn't make other players better. He's not a guy that I think you win a championship And they with. enable him there. Yeah, they, it, they really don't hold him accountable. Well, and that, that's, but, and but, that's but they, part of the but, issue. But they also have to because they're Oklahoma City and, and they fear him leaving because everybody leaves all of these small market mm -hmm. teams right. when they become a free agent. Whitlock, do you think Pat Riley's actually trying to lure LeBron back to Miami? No question about it. In my opinion, the timing of this book the timing of this revelation just all happens to be right when everybody knows LeBron's probably leaving Cleveland. What could be an easier transition for LeBron and his family than transitioning back to Miami? Pat Riley's smart. They have Dwayne Wade there. Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron still close. And again, I think if you look at the East, you add LeBron to the Miami Heat, and again, you add LeBron to any East team and they're going to win it, win the East, but I like the pieces that he would have in Miami. And, and LeBron may have reached a point in his own mind where he realizes the value that Pat Riley and that organization brought to him. I, I could see LeBron going back to Miami. That would insinuate Pat Riley's begging. That's not his That's DNA. I don't think he's begging there. Why not? I don't think he's begging. Look, what are the five stages of grief, right? Five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. And the end of that quote is, I accept it. Right? He's saying, we're done with that. But he also brought up a story to which LeBron came in with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and kind of, hey, you ever get the itch? You ever get the itch to come back and coach? And uh, he walked out of the office itching his leg. In other words, you can come and coach this team. And Pat Riley did what no one in Cleveland has done to LeBron. He stood up to LeBron James. And I think that's one, creating a narrative of, I'm the guy who stood up to LeBron James, and maybe that's the reason we left him. And two, I know what's best for LeBron James in his future, and I accept the reason that he went. And, and I also understand kind of the psychology of LeBron constantly challenging me. Listening to or reading these stories, do you guys remember Jurassic Park? Remember when you first met the Raptors? and the Raptors would test the fences, mm -hmm. but a different spot every day, right. that's who LeBron is. Raptors are, are vicious, but they're also super smart and cunning, and they're constantly testing you. That's who LeBron is to coach. And in order for LeBron to get the most out of himself, that's the kind of guy that he's going to have to play for. I don't think this is begging. I think this is Pat Riley saying, you know what? I see your point. I accept it. I've moved on. And we've, we've, my little dream that time didn't work. There'll be another dream, and if he wants to come and play ball, remember, I'm the one guy who stood up to you in the past. But see, I played for Pat, and I had the unique experience of uh, dealing with his multiple personalities in, in this regard. <laughs> Seriously, because he's as competitive as anybody. Right. Hates to lose, okay? But he holds everybody accountable. But he doesn't want his players at times to kind of figure out who he is. So he'll keep you off balance. One time he'll talk to you at practice. Next, he won't say a word. He'll buy you dinner, then he won't say anything. From my conversations with people close, it's more of an olive branch to say I made a mistake, I was wrong. Not so much trying to lure LeBron back. Now, if LeBron said and talked to D. Wade and said, uh, yeah, I would love to come back to Miami to see if we can make it happen, I don't think the Heat would turn it down. But I don't think this was a point where Pat Riley said, is saying that, yes, I made a mistake, I accept that I was wrong, I'm trying to get you back. And again, I don't also believe that LeBron's family was as happy in Miami 
as they are and wanted to go back to Cleveland. So that's still another layer that you're talking about that's kind of, I think, misinformed in regards to LeBron being and his family being happy in Miami. What about Pat Riley thinking, listen, I'm a legend. I'm not going to be here forever. I don't want to be LeBron's enemy. Like, I'm almost done here. Th there's probably some truth to that, but I I Jim is calling... Pat, what I think we all believe, the ultimate competitor. Ultimate. Okay, and so if you're the ultimate competitor sitting in his chair, mm -hmm. CEO, part owner, whatever, why wouldn't you want LeBron James? Because he got a big, he got, he got a biggest, bigger ego than a lot of people who've played the game. So sometimes that ego trumps the right decision. Okay, you see what I'm saying? It, it can trump that right decision. And, and again, for me just talking to people now, it could be totally miscued or wrong, but from what I'm hearing is that that's not the reason why he sent out this message. Could it change? Eh, probably. If Mickey Erickson wants that to be done, he respects Mickey enough to be able to make that happen and give it a go. Well, listen, I, look, I think it's it's done. That that door is mostly closed. I, I, I do think it could... Why? This is, why? I mean, look where LeBron is vacationing. Look where he's buying homes. He's no longer going down to Miami with the same regularity that he was in his first couple years in Cleveland. Now it's become L.A. He loves the idea of L.A. and what it can do for his brand after his career. But if you're going to come back, you're going to do it under Pat Riley's terms. R remember, if you read Phil Jackson's book, and when what Phil got got obliterated for was Phil Jackson relaying what Pat Riley had told him about having... Uh, LeBron James's guys on the plane, mm -hmm. that you had to operate. Uh, LeBron will leave when LeBron wants to leave. LeBron will go spend a night in Cleveland or a night in Miami when LeBron wants to do. And Pat, Pat Riley and Phil Jackson didn't like it. That's not how you run an organization. So I, I do think that it was a lot harder than he's ever let on. I do think that he's come to accept it. I think he understands the psychology of LeBron James. Would he take him back? Sure, but he wants to take him back in, under the guise of, I was the guy who you came in and wanted to fire my coach, and I stood up to you, and we won championships in spite of what you wanted. If you want to come back, it's under my terms. If not, I'll be the good guy and take the high road for me. I, I just don't have that kind of pride. I ain't too proud <laughs> to beg, and I'd be begging for LeBron James if I'm Pat Riley.